In this video, I'd like to talk about classifying numbers, specifically looking at the difference between a rational number and an irrational number. So let's start by just thinking about the definitions of these words. So what is an irrational number and what is a rational number? So a rational number, we can think of this as a ratio of two different integers. So we can write as a definition that a rational number, I should put number here, is a fraction or a quotient between two different integers. And remember what an integer is. An integer is just a whole number, including zero and the negative numbers. So more generally, we can write a rational number as a fraction a over b, where we can say that a and b are integers. So one way to think about these numbers to remember what they are is to think of them as fraction numbers. So like I mentioned, the word ratio is in the word rational. And a ratio is a comparison between two numbers, but ratios are often written as fractions. So rational numbers are fraction numbers. And let's look at a couple different examples. So something like two thirds is a fraction between two different integers. Something like minus four over seven is another fraction between two integers and even a whole number. So something like four, since four can be rewritten as four divided by one, this is a rational number. So all the integers, all the whole numbers are also rational numbers because they can be written as fractions. Any number can be divided by one and it will still be equal to that number. So if rational numbers are fractional numbers, irrational numbers, remember the IR in front essentially just negates the word. So these are non-fractional numbers. They are numbers that cannot be written as fraction. So let's write that down as well. So an irrational number, we can say its definition is that it cannot be written as a fraction. And with irrational numbers, these are quite a bit trickier, but we can look at some different examples. So for instance, a number like pi, the circle number that 3.14159, that cannot be written as a fraction. Or another famous mathematical constant, the number e, which shows up with exponential functions or logarithms. But also more common numbers like the square root of two, the square root of three, not the square root of four though, because the square root of four is just equal to two. So square roots that do not have perfect squares underneath the square root, because if it does have a perfect square like four or nine or 16, then you can actually find an exact whole number answer to those. But also maybe a cube root of a non-perfect cube, so the cube root of seven, the cube root of nine, but not the cube root of eight, since the cube root of eight is just equal to two. Fourth roots, fifth roots, many different roots will produce these irrational numbers. So there are many examples of irrational numbers, and for these practice problems, we, need, we just need to determine if a number is rational or irrational. So let's look at these specific example problems. Now, the one on the bottom, you can determine right away that this is a rational number because this is written as a fraction. So if you can write the number as a fraction or as a whole number, then you know it's rational since that is effectively the definition of a rational number. Now, remember an irrational number cannot be written as a fraction. So looking at this square root up here, First of all, because it is a root, it is possible that this could be irrational. And certain square roots are rational. Like for instance, the square root of four, one number multiplied by itself gives you four, that is just two. 
the square root of 9, that is 3. The square root of 16 as is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. And lastly, the square root of 36 is 6. So if the number underneath the square root can be written as a perfect square, then it's a rational number. So something like the square root of 9 squared, or the square root of 81, you can see it both ways, but the fact that this can be written as a square means that the square and the square root will cancel each other out, and in this case your answer would just be 9. Now 32 cannot be written as a perfect square. In fact, it's between two whole numbers. We know that we write it like this, the square root of 25, that's smaller than root 32, but root 32 is smaller than the square root of 36. So simplifying these, we know that root 32 is somewhere between five and six, and if it's between two whole numbers, then you know for sure that that square root is an irrational number. So square roots, that aren't perfect squares are irrational. But like I said, if it is a perfect square, then it would be a rational number because it would be equal to a whole number. And all whole numbers, remember, we can just divide it by one to make it into a fraction number. So whole numbers are rational numbers.